we got a pulse with modulated signal so what it tells it tells that the all right so today we got this um 2014 Siena and the customer states that the temperature gauge goes up when the engine is idling he says that it doesn't happen while driving that it only happens when the vehicle is not moving so let's start the engine see if we can verify the customer concern this probably is gonna take some time since this vehicle has been sitting for a while so we're gonna have to wait for it to warm up so I turned the AC on and I'm gonna go and see if the fans are on because a vehicle overheating and idle is typically related to the fans so let's see what we got here huh will you look at that so yep both fans are not working and this is definitely a problem we we need to find out why so what I'm gonna do next step is to check my wiring diagram so as you can see this is a pretty simple circuit we got two fuses a 60 amp fuse and a 10 amp fuse uh, both fuses are feeding this fan relay the 10 amp fuse fits the control side and the 60 amp fuse fits the low side of the relay which then is gonna when it gets turned on it's going to fit this ECU this cooling fan ECU which then controls both fans the main fan motor and the sub, sub fan motor we also got this wire right here which it basically establishes communication between the fan ECU and the ECM and this is how the ECM knows when the fan ECU has turned the fans on so what I decided to do in this case was to start by shaking the fuses uh, I decided to start by shaking the 60 amp fuse and then I move and test to the 10 amp fuse so in my first test I made a huge mistake so see if you all can catch it so now I'm about to check the 60 amp fuse that fits the fan ECU as you can see the 60 amp fuse is below these two 30 amp fuses so let's locate it on the box and it's gonna be this one right here so what we can do is either remove the cover and test right at the fuse with our test light or we can swap the fuses and since they're the same size and then see if we get a change um, when we start the car so I'm gonna swap the fuses so let's do that let's see what we got and this one doesn't really look like it's, like it's blown or anything but let me swap it anyway so now let's tow the car and see what we got if we get any change Oh, no change at all. Fans are still off. So that didn't work. So the mistake I believe I made on this first test was to go there and start by removing fuses and swapping fuses. I don't think that's a good idea at all. I think it's a better practice on fuses like this to remove the core of the fuse and test with a test light or a voltmeter and then um, do, if you're concerned you do want to inspect the fuse and look at it more closely then you do that after you have tested the circuit because if the first thing you do is to remove the fuse you can potentially cause other issues so leave in the comments what you think about it and that's what we're here to learn from each other so i wanted to share in this video this footage um of uh, this is from from another video and this is how what I was talking about how I would I believe it's better to check these fuses first uh, remove the core as you see I did and then 
you go and with a test light, for example, in this case, and check for power and do things like that. So now I'm gonna check the the 10 amp fuse. Let me remove this cover and locate the fuse. So we got a 10 amps, a 30, a 20, another 20, a 15, and then there is our 10 amp. So see, you have the 10, the 30, two 20s, and then the 15, and then the 10 amps. So let's go and test it. So let me go and grab the test light. Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah, I'm gonna grab the power probe feel like it's gonna be easier so let's get our power pro connected the negative lead to the negative terminal of the battery and the positive lead to the positive terminal of the battery So let's see what we get here. We got 11.4 volts. That's battery voltage. That's good. And 11.4. So we good here. So now I'm gonna test right at the fan ECU. I'm gonna check the feed, the power feed. I already bad pro it. So let me show you more closely. So I turn the ignition on. I'm testing now and um, we got battery voltage. Let me show you closely. You see 11.5. So we good here. We got good feed to the to the fan ECU. So now I'm gonna go and shake the ground. Let me back pro it. And as y'all can see we got a good ground too. So what we know we have good power feed to the fan ECU and we have a good ground. So I guess the question now is, is the ECU feeding the fans? We have these two connectors. From here the ECU it feeds each fan uh, individually. And it looks like they're like cross connected. So, so what I mean is that the connector on the left fits the fan on the right, and the connector on the right fits the fan on the left. So I'm gonna start by checking the feed to the fan on the left, and we got battery voltage. So I decide to pull the scope, and I wanna see what what I got with the scope. If the ECU is trying to control the fans that will tell me that the driver side that the control wire is good so let's see what we got and look we have we definitely have a power pulse port <laughs> we got a pulse with modulated signal so what it tells it tells that the ECU is trying to control the fans so the control side is good the driver in the ECU is good so this left us with the po only possibility that the fans are actually bad. Let me see if we get the same result down there. Look, we have the same pulse with signal. So let's hook up our, my test light and I want to see if the ECU is able to control the ground side of the test light and power it up. And look guys, it's lighting up, so the ECU driver is definitely fine. It's definitely attempting to control the fans, so we definitely have bad fans 
this this is the call I'm making on this one. 